That being said, we're going to move on to our second Hall of Fame inductee. I've known him forever. I think he sat on the bar stool that he still sits on when I come into the Rover and tells me stories of his presidency. And I know that in a couple of years, he plans to play two minutes of Monmouth rugby with three generations of individuals. So introducing Brian Cardew, our next Hall of Famer, is his son, Greg. Hello, how are you? Hi, for anyone that doesn't know me, I'm Greg Cardew. Uh, oh, you know, right, I gotta stay, Greg, you gotta stay right, right, right on it. Right on it. Uh, right on. I played from uh, 2001 to about 2014. Um, although my experience with Mama Rugby started a lot earlier because my father uh, basically loved Mama Rugby. Uh, when he was a young boy, I heard he was pretty good. I, uh, I don't know. You know, he, he'll tell you that he was. I don't know. He, but he was an athlete. He was an athlete. So you know, when he moved to Lincroft, and the the team started, uh, you know, it was right up his alley, right? Um, you know, he he met a lot of friends there. Um, a lot of the guys are here today to support him, uh, and these guys have been there through thick and thin, and they've done everything together. Uh, my father was one of the guys that started the old boys division. Um, you know, when when people started getting a little older, they still wanted to play. And he was one of the guys that was there all the time. A lot of the guys, you know, moved on. He kept going. He kept going, he kept going, he kept going. Um, you know, one of the cool things that I got to do, because I started playing, was uh, everyone knows Brian Harris? Legend. Uh, we did a three generations front line. And it was myself as the hooker, Brian Harris, and my dad. And we played a game Brian had his, his purple jersey on, and we, we played a game. It, it was awesome. Uh, I think my dad uh, was so inspired by it that he wrote an article. He submitted it to uh, Rugby Magazine, and it was published. It's in, it's in the clubhouse, if anyone wants to read it, but it's, it's awesome. Uh, he does have one more match, and that's when my son Cameron is old enough to play, and we'll have a Cardew front line. And that'll be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my father's done everything uh, for this club. He's done fundraisers. He's organized the tournaments, whether it be Can Am in Lake Placid, whether it be our our tournament at Seagirt. Uh, you know, the, he's done a lot of the stuff with the tours, Bermuda, ski trips, ski trips. Sweatshirts. Yeah. sweatshirts, everything. He is the man behind Mammoth Rugby. And a lot of times it doesn't go noticed, but he, he no, he's always been there uh, from the beginning. Um, I've heard many stories over the years, obviously, um, and he can tell you about them. I don't know if you're going to want to sit there and listen to him for all the times, but he'll tell you about it if you ask him. I will say, ask him about the Richard uh, Richard's Pub about the bikers who became the unofficial rugby players after every match. So, I just want to say, my my father, uh, you know, he loves Monmouth Rugby. It's been a second family to him. He's been active in the club. And I, when I mean active, like he's been active in the club ever since the beginning when they were in Brookdale. He's been a president. He's helped bring us the Wild Rover so that we can have a place to party after our matches. Uh, and he's kept it the best place to party ever since. Yeah. So, if everyone could raise their glasses and let's toast my father. <laughs> okay, fine, I'll put it on now. It's not to laugh to the speech. I will thank you, Greg, for those kind words about your old man. Thank you, Frank, who's not here, who was the person who nominated me for the uh, Hall of Fame. Thank you, everybody. You know, Mammoth Rugby family, it's been great. Um, as we all know, we've celebrated our 50th anniversary last year. Uh, words such as more than a club and Mammoth family were bandied about, and it's true. Um, but I got to tell you, for decades, like Greg said, after my own family, Mammoth Rugby was my second family. Finally, I want to go on to say, oh, I know what it is. I wanted to. 
congratulate the other inductees, Tex, uh, Kate, and Fran. There you go. Uh, he's not here tonight, but Ed Windis, a friend of mine from long ago, used to play for the club, was the one who badgered me for years and years and years to come play rugby. So finally in April 1977, long before many of you were born, um, I played my first game. And it was love at first hit. It was great. I loved to hit people. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> what I didn't know then, which I know now, is that rugby is the ultimate fantastic team sport. Everybody does things together. And I've gotten so many lifelong friends, old men, old boys, old bats, and now the newer, younger m members of the club, which is fantastic. Uh, all of you, yeah, exactly. Um, we're, we're, we're always a family. We're our family on the, on the field, at tours, on tournaments, in other people's bars, but most especially here at the Wild Rover. This is it. My understanding of Hall of Fame was that it recognizes superb rugby play on the field as well as committed acts for the club off the field. I only played a handful of A games, but I was a solid B guy, and I think, to me, more importantly, I was a dedicated club man. Yep. Um, I played, like people said, for 47 years, and over that time period, it, it's just... It's, it's been a wonder. I mean, it's been fantastic. I've met so many great people. And it, it's, that's the, the reason I'm in the Hall of Fame now is not because of what I did on the field, which was okay, but not great, but, be, but because of other things. And if you want me to tell you all about them, I will, but I don't think we have time. Uh, any, in any case, thank you all very much. It's an honor and a privilege to now be a member of the Mama Rugby Hall of Fame. Cheers to Brian! Hey, Pat! Hey, Pat. Hey, Pat. Hey, Pat. Hey, Pat.